on me. Um, you don't need a pack at all. Um, what sucks about a pack while you're walking through the woods is um, you could turn and uh, scrape against brush. While you're wearing a pack, you have a larger profile, so when you're when you're turning and to look in a certain direction or whatever, you're going to scrape trees on your back making noise, you know. So you want to try to keep a small profile while you're walking through the woods. You're going to make less noise. Another key thing, I think, is wearing wool. Um, you don't make nearly as much noise wearing wool as you brush up against um, tree branches and such. Um, it's not going to make noise like, like a synthetic wood. Um, and uh, I hope to get a wool vest um, next year. Uh, this is a windstopper vest, um, so which is nice because wool, after around about 15 miles an hour, um, wind will start robbing you of heat. In a lot of situations, you don't have to deal with the wind in a still hunting um, scenario because you're moving, so you're keeping warm that way. So it would be nice to have a wool vest too, just to cut down on, on noise. And when you're moving through the woods, wool will also keep you um, dry and warm and uh, you're going to be less liable to sweat. Um, you're going to have the most comfort range wearing wool than any other material. This is a great situation of why you wear wool when you still hunt. Um, I have to walk about a mile to the spot where I want to enter the woods and then still hunt back along these um, along this marsh and uh, there's just multiple beaver ponds down this marsh and creek area. I've actually never been there, but I'm going to check it out and see if there's any um, good spots for future hunts next year and, and see if I can kick up a buck. Usually it's thick in those areas and maybe they're in the grass bedding or something. But anyway, I have to walk down this clear cut logging road. Um, and I've already been walking up probably a half mile or more. So it's going to be about a mile walk. And uh, that's after um, I, I got dressed and stuff at um, my cabin and then got to the hunting spot. So my body's already warm. I never had a chance to cool down. So if you were wearing synthetics, you're, you're going to sweat. I have not worked up a sweat yet. And I did stop about uh, 20 minutes into the walk um, just to cool my body down because um, wool is good, but it's not, you know, it's not a miracle worker. So I just stopped for 20 minutes in a likely spot that a deer might come through and just and just chilled my body down, which is a um, good tip right when you start if you don't want to sweat, is to just calm down, sit down, and wait till your body kind of acclimates and, and uh, like I say, ch chills down. But um, there is no material other than wool that is going to keep you comfortable in um, a wider range of scenarios and still hunting is a perfect example when you're walking and stopping walking and stopping there might be some hunts where like this I walk a mile and uh, at a steady clip and then enter the woods and I'm doing this so I can hunt back into the wind because when you're still hunting you want to walk as much as possible into the wind so the deer can't smell you coming. So I'm gonna be walking a mile at a steady clip and then I'm gonna slow right down. And uh, who knows how far I'll, I'll go until I find a likely spot where I wanna stop. And then you might stop for an hour, you might stop for a half hour, you might stop for two hours, you know? So wool is the, the best material to keep you comfor comfortable in uh, those type of situations and sy synthetics, just won't do, keep you comfortable like wool will. I got my knife and um, all that gear on my person without any type of pack other than my binoculars which I keep close at hand because you're going to want to use them a lot. Um, every time I stop, which every few s steps, and a lot of times I'll just hold my binoculars in my hand. Um, around my neck and then I can drop them if a shot opportunity arises or whatever but you want to have your binoculars on because every couple steps you're looking at a totally different angles um, you know you're seeing around a tree that you didn't see three steps ago so and that's where that buck could be so I scan all the time with my binoculars and I have them in my hand most most of the time as I'm walking through the woods a good reason to have binoculars is um in this situation where I can stop and, and glass these woods.
across the way. See if there's any deer traveling, because that's over 300 yards away. I wouldn't be able to see it with the naked eye. So um, I, I think still hunting with binoculars is a must. Actually, hunting in general with binoculars is a must. I used to not do it, and uh, when I started, I saw the the benefits um, of seeing deer that you know aren't shooters, so you can remain calm, or seeing a deer that you wouldn't know was a, a deer that you wanted to take. And uh, knowing that it is a shooter, then you can start positioning yourself for the shot, whether it be a bow or a gun. And uh, a lot of times you can't do that without binoculars. And as uh, far as what type of binoculars, in my opinion, I wouldn't buy binoculars, consider binoculars under probably 200 bucks. I would just save your money for another year to get something better. And uh, I've had eight power binoculars and I've had 10 power. And I definitely think that anywhere in wooded terrain in the east, you know, maybe not like uh, out west hunting, but in the east, eight power is better. It's a wider field of view and um, it lets in more light so you have better, you can see clear. Uh, morning and uh, dusk and dusk and dawn you can see better with a power because it lets in more light and I've recently purchased a, a premium pair of binoculars and it took me 10 years to do this but um, there is a huge difference between a 400 pair 400 dollar pair of binoculars and you know a thousand or more and these are um, Neopta Binoculars, their glass is supposed to be as good as Swarovski, and they're uh, about $500 cheaper, but they're still premium. Um, and uh, there's, it's definitely easier to see animals with a premium pair of binoculars than the Leupold and um, uh, Paragon, Paragon type binoculars I had prior to this. They're uh, all does, but I would have never seen those deer without binoculars. Yeah, that's a, a perfect example. I came over this ridge, and there's this little drop here, a little valley, and I glassed it, and there's three does there. And um, I would have, I mean, you can't barely see them with the naked eye unless they're moving across some light-colored brush behind them or whatever. But um, I would have never seen them without binoculars. And then with a premium pair of binoculars, what I've found is you can cut through, it like cuts through brush. It's just, I don't know how to explain it. You can just see, see it more clearly. Obviously it's, it's sharper and there's no guessing. You just look through the woods and you can just pick up animals right away. It's, it's pretty incredible. I'm, I'm uh, glad I spent the money for a nice, really nice pair of binoculars. I wish I would have done it sooner. Um, it does make a difference. And from having no binoculars to a good set of binoculars, three, $400 pair, um, it's a huge benefit. But I can not only see that these are not deer that I, I want to shoot, I can see that they're calm, that there's no other bucks in the area, that they're not looking into the woods after bucks, and they, they have since walked into the woods. I can't see them anymore. But uh, you can look through a thick, thicker um, section of woods and actually see past all these little branches that with your naked eye, you would not be able to see a deer, and you can pick up animals. And it's, it's pretty crazy what you can see with a, a nice pair of binoculars. Um, but yeah, that's key to have, not have a pack, keep a small, kind of a small compact package, you know, not a lot of stuff hanging off of you. Um, wool is key to keep 
warm, dry, and quiet. It's nice to have a watch because uh, you want to kind of keep on time. If you, you tell somebody where you're, where you are, where you're going, when, what time you'll be back, um, you kind of lose track of time if you're not going to have a watch on um, to, to kind of tell you, hey, I got to get, you know, so and so far in the next hour. I better, you know, step it up um, or, or stop still hunting and start walking. Um, so nobody's worried about you. So as far as the other items when you're still hunting, um, obviously you want to carry a knife in case you do uh, get it, you can uh, gut it out. You want to get the, the guts out as fast as possible and cool that, that uh, meat down um, so it'll stay it's better. It's uh, good to have a, uh, a headlamp. Um, what, even if you're not planning on coming in at dark, you might get lost and uh, you might see yourself in the woods at dark. So it's good to have a headlamp. Um, hand warmers are always good. Um, if it gets really cold, um, I'll carry a, a muff with me and put a hand warmer in there. Otherwise, a lot of times I'll just take two hand warmers and put them in my pockets um, for each hand uh, gets one. I like to carry a GPS because when I'm walking through the woods, I constantly find spots that I would like to hunt in the future. So I mark those in my GPS so I can um, refer to them later, uh, set up stands before the next season. Um, you see trails um, that that uh, deer are using going across a, a swamp or a logging road. You can follow those back. You can mark them. You can follow them back, find different tree stand locations, and also to get you out of the woods. And uh, if this dies, then it's nice to have a compass. In some areas um, where people hunt, you don't know the area very well. It's nice to have a compass just to be like, okay, you know, I head southeast. I'm going to hit a logging road and get out. And then extra shells. I carry what's in my, my gun, which my rifle um, carries four. And then um, I actually like, I don't usually carry ten more. Um, usually I cut this in half. And uh, um, you don't really need 14 rounds. At that point, it's more target shooting than hunting. So I, I like to uh, just cut this in half and keep an extra five with me and then uh, throw those in the pocket. They don't take up as much room and uh, bulk. So that's nice to have. And that's about it as far as gear. Um, as far as how slow to walk in the woods, um, I guess a good rule of thumb is however slow you're going, go slower. Because to come up, you want to see that deer before... He sees you, and uh, they do this every moment of their life. They're in the woods looking for predators. We only do it for a couple months out of the year, a couple days out of the year, and a few hours of those days um, trying to sneak up on game. So they're really good at it. So you want to slow down to the point, just a few steps, stop, grab your binoculars, look around, because you're going to see every few steps, you're going to see different areas. And if you have those binoculars, you can um, see that deer before he sees you. And uh, you're obviously listening for them um, crunching through the woods too. And uh, that brings us to when you should hunt. Um, if it's really crunchy out, you don't want to still hunt. You know, you're better off stand hunting. Um, if it's if it's a wet, rainy day or something like that where the leaves are wet, um, then you can move a little bit faster, and that's a great time to still hunt. Um, some areas, you know, you have to slow down when it's when it's thicker because you're going to be brushing up against stuff more, and you can't see as far. So you really want to slow down in those areas. And then there's times where you can see 200 yards in the woods, you can move a little bit faster. Um, and that's where those binoculars really come in handy is those those open areas where you can really stretch out and see that deer before he sees you. But even in the thick areas, when you put up a good pair of binoculars, you can see through that brush that your naked eye, it looks like a wall. But when you put those binoculars up, you see pockets and stuff and uh, you'll catch that deer walking through a little opening. Um, and that's where having a grunt tube comes in handy. I like to carry a grunt tube just in case. Um, I don't just walk through the woods and call a lot, um, but if I see a deer and I and I you know I need to steer him away, I would rather do it with a grunt tube than with my a mouth call. You know, I'm not very good at that. So um, unless I'm stopping a deer, that's pretty much the only time I'll use um, my my voice to emulate a grunt. Um, sometimes you need to stop him in an opening. You just bam, and he'll stop. 
So otherwise, I like to have a grunt call with me. And um, there are times where you might want to rattle box too. Um, but usually when I'm still hunting, I don't rattle too often. And I have in the past, you know, made a little bit too much noise. I like to make, maybe just make a doe bleat. Um, to, to me, there's maybe an animal out there. There's a deer out there, a mature buck that, that heard that noise, you know, and he's, he's on high alert. And then I make that little doe grunt. I like to think that maybe it'll calm him down and a few steps ahead I might see him or whatever. It hasn't happened yet, but um, sometimes I do do that when I make too much noise, I'll, I'll do a little bleep. But other than that, um, I like to, to stop in any likely area and, uh, you know, sit there for a half an hour or or upwards of an, of an hour. You know, it all depends on, on the situation or whatever. If there's a really good spot, I might sit there for a couple hours, get up and move. I don't try to move a, a great distance when I'm still hunting, you know, quarter mile, maybe a half mile, something like that. Um, because when I'm trying to get from point A to point B and I have to do it before dark or whatever like that, I, I, I tend to move too fast and I don't like to do that. I like to get to my, my area I want to hunt and then just, you know, still hunt for, for about a quarter mile, half mile. Um, if you any farther than that and you start kind of, I, I find myself anyway, I start going too quickly. I start walking more and uh, hunting less. You know, go as slow as possible, glass a lot, uh, keep the wind in your, in your favor, keep the wind in your face um, so you're not hunting with the wind. You're going to alert deer. Uh, before you ever see them so you want to keep that wind in your face it's nice to actually have a wind checker with you or um, some milkweed so you can check that once in a while when it's really cold i might carry a muff on me to just to keep my hands warm when i stop and sit it's nice to have my hands right in front of me um, it's easier to, to pull them out and grab your gun to shoot and also it keeps your hands um, more warm with smaller gloves which is uh, important to have not a bulky glove for shooting purposes as you're walking. And a lot of times you can actually walk through the woods if it's not too thick and have your hands in your muff as you're going. So you can have a thinner glove on, you know, as you're walking through. And then you can pull out and grab your gun and, you know, take a shot and not have a bulky glove on. So that's kind of nice. All right, well, I hope this helps somebody out there. And uh, we'll see you on the next video.